Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Charisma Thoughts. I'm Charisma, where I share with you guys my visions that I receive from the universe. Also, any discovery findings that I have may have uh, noticed or discovered or connected the dots to, I share with you guys as well. That's basically what my channel is about, is expressing my visions and sharing it with you guys and also sharing with you guys what I have learned what it pertains to our world about me or anything that's otherworldly i share it with you so for this episode i'm sharing with you guys another vision that i had um it's the most recent one but not really um i was supposed to have been share this with you guys but i've been sharing with you guys uh, a finding or a discovery i came up came to or basically came to me actually uh, about homo sapiens are genetically modified mutations evolved species of the animal kingdom and we're going to continue on evolving i'm basically breaking that into parts but that's going to be a separate series that i should share on my channel as well but for today i'm just going to keep on sharing with you guys my visions and keep on with the process and i named this series um you know my sharing my vision what the fuck did I just see and what does it all mean? Right now we're just solely focusing on what the fuck did I just see because I'm still trying to figure out the meaning of all of, all of it and so far, so far on, on that. Um, so this dream or vision that I had was I think it was like a week ago, that's like the latest that I had this vision, but it was about Pocahontas. And I don't remember every detail you guys know I don't see my vision from beginning to end I just see glimpses of what I need to know at that particular moment um, in this particular moment there was a lot of go a lot of things going on I saw animals being experimented on like there was two like it was just, like I don't know where I was this is obviously the future that I noticed that I was this is the future timeline um, but I saw that they were experimenting on animals, so they were combining two different species together and they were in pain, like it was not effective, it was a fail experience, experiment in my opinion, because they were in pain, they were like literally um, hurting and I could like feel them and hear them, so it's kind of like weird, but I saw that and I was telling people what I saw of what they were doing. Mind you guys, I don't know where I'm at, some type of facility, I don't know where, this is the future timeline. Um, but I was telling people that I was around about what was, what was going on, but no one believed me. They didn't take me seriously. So, okay, whatever. And then there was another part, like the same vision, but it, it shifted to a different part of adults having sexual relations with children. And mind you, the children don't know what's right or wrong. Like, the children, don't, they don't understand. So, this is not the first time I had a vision about that. But I just didn't understand what that was all about. But I was telling people what the fuck was going on with that as well. And mind you, no one believed me. Until they saw it for themselves and then that's when they, you know. But it's just like, I don't understand why no one was believing me. It was really annoying. Uh, but even so, like, it quickly shifted. Like, during that moment where they were like, you know, trying to have sex with these children, uh, there was two older men. I don't know who these men are, um, but they were looking at me and they were trying to come after me, trying to hurt me. And that's basically what I saw with that. Then we went outside, I was outside and there was, I'm like observing a group of people and there was a one man that I saw and I guess he was in love with me or something. I got, mind you guys, I don't know who this man is, again this is the feature. And there was this other dude that I guess I know him, he know me, or he know of me, I don't know. But he basically, he was telling this man, like, no. Um, he's like, no, you can't love her, she's married. He said, he said you can't love her, she's married. And he mentioned Kokom from Pocahontas. He said, he's not just an Indian man, he's a goddess. I'm like... I'm a goddess. I thought he was like a god or something. But um, like, wouldn't it be God because he's like a male? But like, he said no. They say goddess, so I don't know what that was about. Um, and then it shifted to me, mind you. I I, I kind of like, I don't. I, it's me, but like, my personality is completely different in the future. Just just to say that, <laughs> and like more like I don't know. But I saw me, and then he, they basically the same group of people came up to me. They're like, oh, you're a Pocahontas. 
I'm like, what? Pocahontas? I like, what did Pocahontas have to do with anything? I'm like, I was like, what? This is that's the past life that you lived. You was Pocahontas. I'm like, okay. And I was like, okay. There's so many dreams of people telling me I'm this, I'm that. So it's like, at this point, it's like, okay. I'm not going to know anything until I gain my mem memories and remember who I am. So I'm just taking it a grain of salt. But apparently, I had a past life as being Pocahontas. But um, after that vision, I woke up. Mind you, you guys, it was just a lot going on with minor details and bigger details that really opened my eyes. You know, what does the experiment with the animals? And then it shifted to people having sex with children. And then it shifted to Pocahontas and, and about Kokoam, like the love interest in the movie Pocahontas that I know of his name. So I'm like, it was a lot going on and so little details at the same time. It was such a weird vision. It was very vivid. Um, and I feel like it's the future timeline where that's going to happen, where it's going to come to fruition, basically. Very interesting, very weird. And some of the stuff I just not, did not want to see, but I still see them. Like, I, I don't get to choose what I see. Sometimes I see, I see the darkest shit. Sometimes I see the good shit, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just see things that pertains to me that's very dramatic and I don't want to see it, but I see it. So, it's just a lot. <laughs> that's basically what the vision that I saw was. I know it's not a lot to go on in, in Imagine Me um, because it was just glimpses of each of these scenarios that I saw of, you know, the experiment, these two men that was trying to come after me, and then the, the, the adult having sex with children like I had so many visions like that like one of them was about worlds like it was like but these worlds were like they're black worlds of some kind and they it's like a cultural thing that they do to keep their bloodline intact I still didn't like what I saw so that and then this one was not nothing with bloodline or anything like this this was something different and I don't know what they were trying to do what was the purpose of having sex with these children I don't think it was just because like they were pedophiles I think there's something more to it on why they were trying to do it. I think it's some type of experiment they were doing with that, but it was still disgusting to see, disgusting in general. I don't like that. Um, and then it shifted to me being outside, dark, a man who's apparently in love with me, I don't know who this man is, um, who, I don't know who this man is supposed to represent and who this other dude was who was speaking on my behalf who know me this is not the first time i saw this dude he comes in my vision once in a while and apparently he knows me and or know, know of me or something like know who i am mind you guys i don't remember who i am but none of us do really especially if you're chosen you don't remember who you are um so i'm just trying to gain my memories to figure out what all this means but other than that, it was just a lot going on. But what I gather is to look deeper into Pocahontas. So I'm like, okay, let me look deeper. So I went back and watched the movie Pocahontas. The first one. I didn't watch the second one. But I remember when I was a child, I used to be... That's one of my favorite uh, Disney movies. But my favorite, favorite Disney movie is Tarzan. But my close second would be Pocahontas and then Lion King. But those are my three top threes. <laughs> it was always Tarzan and then it was Pocahontas. And then it was uh, Lion King. So I was like, okay, let me go back and watch it. Mind you, I haven't watched this movie since I was a child. And when I was a child, I thought it was just like the greatest love story, the greatest movie ever, which is, it still is to me because I love her. Like, she's like my, my favorite character, Pocahontas. I just love what she represents. She is so free. She represents a free spirited person, which I love. Like, I love that about her and her strength and having faith in herself and like I just love everything about her so she's always my favorite character in general but I also was in love with like her love story with John Smith until I rewatched the movie me being an adult and I realized a lot of things that I didn't notice I didn't understand until I got older mind you it's not a great love story at all first of all what I picked up from the movie watching it again I felt like John Smith <laughs> is a fucking swindler he's a grifter like he just gave me the, he's just giving me that vibes <laughs> like seriously like I'm like who I'm like why does she love him first of all she said that she like towards the end of the movie she confessed her love to him and I'm like girl you knew him for three seconds 
you knew him for three seconds. And how can you love somebody you don't even know? So I can see why she didn't end up marrying him on the second movie. Even though I gotta go watch it again. Because I didn't watch it since I was a child. But even so, I'm like, girl, what? Like, I don't know if this is her first crush that she had or whatever. Because it was just not adding up. Because when you're younger, you not you don't piece everything together. He's like, oh, dear, blah, blah, blah. And then you get older and then you realize it's like, girl, you're not in love. You just you just had a crush. And I'm like, even so, I'm like, girl, you don't even know him. He's a swindler and he's a grifter. That's the type of vibes he was giving me. And I just didn't like him anymore. Like, after I watched it, I'm like, oh, this is not a love story. Like, ugh, I don't like it. But either who, either who, uh, there was a few things that I, um, that stood out to me that I needed to know. So, in the beginning of the movie, uh, we see Pocahontas, obviously. She's the main character on, on this bitch. Um, and we see her talking to her, like, her father uh, arriving um, to her uh, home. They came back from war, I guess, her, her, um, her father, um, soldiers or warriors, I would say, they came back from fighting a war or something like that from a, uh, with a lot of village. And they arrived and you see him uh, talking to her and saying, oh, you remind me of your mother, of her strength and her wisdom. That part stu stu got, stood out to me because we never really saw anything about her mother or a picture of her mother or anything like that. She was mentioned, but there's something about her mother that's very... Um, it just stood out to me because we don't know nothing about her. All, all that we knew that she looked like Pocahontas or Pocahontas looked like her and she had strength, she had wisdom and she was free spirited just like her. So that part stood out to me because her mother is unknown and I feel like her mo mother is actually significant more than we, what we believe to know. <laughs> what we believe to you know understand is like her mother plays a key factor about Pocahontas. There's something with that because there was something that her father said to her. Uh, I don't remember what particular scene it was but he said that one day you will be like he didn't say it like that but basically in that sense he said that she will be her or something like you are becoming her. And for some reason that part just stood out to me and especially when he gave her um, her mother her mother Leckless, uh, because Kokolam, the he's from her village. He asked her father for Pocahontas' hand in marriage, basically, and her father accepted that, and he basically told Pocahontas, "You're engaged." <laughs> and Pocahontas was like, "What?" Like Pocahontas was not feeling Kokolam. She just didn't feel any type of attraction to him. She just felt like he was just too serious. But in this particular scene, he gave Pocahontas, her father gave Pocahontas her mother's necklace. This necklace is very significant. It stood out to me. There's something about the necklace. Uh, I don't know exactly what it means, but I know it means something because it stood out to me. So everything is not a coincidence to me. Everything connects. Because that necklace, it plays a part somehow. <laughs> Just haven't figured it out, but it does. So she gave he gave her the necklace in the beginning, and you know she was still like having. She was concerned about it. She didn't want to get married to Coco. She just didn't have any type of feelings for him. And she just felt like he was too serious. That they didn't match. Um, so that was that. Okay. So with that necklace. The scene where um, Coco saw her kissing John Smith. Or being affectionate. No, I think he was kissing her. Yeah, they were kissing, and Kokomom saw that, and he got angry. He was mad because he was in love with Pocahontas, and they were technically engaged, even though she didn't really say that she was. <laughs> she didn't accept it or whatever. So he went to try to attack John Smith, um, and there's more to that, but, you know, watch the movie. But basically, that's what it was all about. He saw, and he didn't like what he saw, and he went to go fight, fight John Smith. Until one of John Smith's um, comrades that saw what was happening and they view Indians or Native Americans, whatever you want to call them, because um, I don't know the right label to call them because, like, maybe they don't like be called Native Americans. But um, yeah, one of John Smith's comrades saw what was happening like, you know, an Indian guy is attacking one of their own and he had a gun and they view Indians. Native American people as evil or savages. So what he did, he shot Kokomo. And when he shot Kokomo, 
he uh, Coco won't grab Pocahontas necklace and as he grabbed her necklace it broke and he fell into the water for some reason that part stood out to me too um that necklace there's something about a necklace and it broke when he died I, don't know, I feel like it signified like a contract, like a soul contract or like a um, a bond that they had and it broke when he died. But I don't know, something like that. But yeah, he, he died because, you know, one of John Smith's comrades thought, you know, he was going to kill one of his own. So he shot Kokoram. Kokoram died. Kokoram was sad or whatever, kind of. Oh, <laughs> not really. Oh, uh, she was. And because uh, she... You know, she even though she wasn't in love with Coco, she still had feelings like she that's her, one of her villagers, like that's, that's her family, basically. And so, yeah, that's one of her family, and that was that with that. The reason why that stood out to me is because of my vision. They said that Coco and Pocahontas actually married in real life. But what we believe from based off the Disney movie that they never married, she ended up marrying some other dude from the second movie. I have to rewatch that, you guys. Um, but she didn't. They, they made it seem that they, she never married Kokoram. They made it seem that she was in love with John Smith, and Kokoram was just not compatible with her. But based off my vision, Kokoram and Pocahontas actually did marry. They were together. And he wasn't just an Indian man, he was some type of god or goddess, wherever. I don't know if that was a slip of the tongue or... I don't believe it's a slip of the tongue or a coincidence. I just feel... <laughs> I don't believe it's a slip of the tongue. I don't believe that was a coincidence. I just feel like that was probably significant too of that person that said that. Like, he wasn't just an Indian man. He's a goddess. He's a, like he's like a god or a goddess or something like that. So, there's something special and unique about Kokoam. A Pocahontas relationship and it's and about him in general but it's more to the story than what we know about their about Pocahontas and about him but that necklace I felt like it, it signified a bond or a contract or something it's something that ties them together because when he died he grabbed the necklace because like he wasn't trying to grab like he wasn't you know, trying to break the leg of as he died. It was just something that he was holding, like, he was falling and he just fell onto it. Like, you know how you about to, like, fall and you try to, like, hurry up, like, trying to get up? It was something like that moment. So he grabbed the necklace and it broke as he, you know, fell into the water and he died. So that signified that their bond was broken or something in that sense or something like that. Something broke. Um, based off the movie, if we're going based off the movie, but in real life, we don't really know what really happened. Even though there are um, videos out there that says this happened, that happened, because I have done my research about Pocahontas. Apparently, they said that she was actually 14 um, at the time when John Smith and these people came to her. Um, so that's that version. And there's another version of her marrying some other, I don't know, like, they said that she was the first mother or the first I think they said that she was the first mother or the first woman for something. Uh, one of the research video I saw but as I know learn more I will share more on the update version to this vision. But basically that part stood out to me. I just didn't clarify what that meant in the movie. So that and also there's a lot of part Um, okay, when she went to go talk to Grandma Grandma Rollo, and no, I think this is before. This is before she went to go talk to Grandma Grandma Rollo, which is the, the wisdom tree, I like to call her. Um, she was asking for guidance when it came to marrying um, Coco because she was just conflicted. Like, she didn't... She, she felt like it was a duty of her to marry him and then another part of her was not in love with her she wanted to follow her own heart she wanted to follow her heart because she wasn't in love with him based off the movie and she was you know singing a song what was the song what song was it yeah I don't remember the song, exact song it wasn't Color of the Wind I think it was the Two Path song like what is it called 
Oh, how it goes. I wish I could. Okay, you guys. <laughs> um, once I find it, I will link it down below. But anyways, she was singing that song, and she was by the river singing. You know, you know how that scene goes. And she touched the water. As she was touching the water, it did. No, that scene was actually when she spoke to Grandma Willow. That what? Yeah, she was actually speaking to Grandma Willow about asking for guidance on what she should what she should do. And she was saying that her dad her dad said that Kokomo asked her to marry her and that like she's not in love with him. And what? She, and she was just asking Grandma Willow for guidance. And Grandma Willow just actually told her something about like the ripple effect when she touched the water. Like it did like a little ripple thing. She said everything has to. Okay, that scene stood out to me too, because something about the ripple effect. There are certain things that must. I don't know. There's something about that because not only does it signify my life, because you guys, everything connects. Because I go back to like I look at every detail in my life. <laughs> apparently, because I realized something. My elementary school, our mascot was the bald eagle, which represents feminine, e feminine, uh, feminine energy. My middle school mascot was um, ripple effect, the dolphin, ripple effect. And the third one, uh, my high school mascot was um, wolf pack. Which I told you guys before, I mentioned this in one of my visions. There's something about wolves, werewolves. Because um, I actually had a vision about me, you know, shape shifting into a wolf. Um, so there's something about that too. So it's like everything connects. So with that scene when I saw her asking her for guidance and she touched her hand into the water and it did like, it did like a ripple effect. It reminded me of my school mascot. Um, well, I was in middle school. It says that's our th that's that's our phrase. That's our saying. It's ripple effect, and our mascot is the dolphin. So I don't know. Something about that too signifies something as well. Um, all everything must happen a certain way. Is a is is creating a ripple effect. It's creating. It all connects basically. When I saw that, it means everything connects and somehow. I just don't know exactly in what way. And once I find out, I will share with you guys on the update version. But that's basically what I gathered from the movie as well from my vision. But I just wanted to share with you guys what I saw or what happened in my vision, I should say. But again, what the fuck did I just see? I don't know. <laughs> There's just a lot going on. But I appreciate you guys, you know, tuning in to this episode. Um, next you know video I upload I'm going to continue on the process of breaking down my discovery of homo sapiens and all that so thank you guys see you guys next time and you know subscribe like comment down below your thoughts and see you guys next time bye